If you follow American aviation, I have two words that will send chills down your spine. Project Oasis. Join me on my quick trip report to Miami to find out if it's really that bad. Coming up. Good very early morning on this drive to Hartsfield Jackson, Atlanta International Airport. With the low clouds and darkness, it does kind of feel like you're driving directly towards an alien crash site, with the giant green roof's glow visible from miles away. As this is Delta land, you'd at least think that it would be blue. Anyway, thanks for joining, let's go check in. Today we're flying on American Airlines first class down to Miami. I'll admit, it does feel a little bit intimidating flying American from Atlanta. Kind of like trespassing in enemy territory or something. Check-in, or rather my bag drop, took about 30 seconds with the very friendly agent at the priority line. Included in the price, in the intro, was a $90 upgrade that I purchased a few days before departure. Yes, it's a very short flight, but when you consider the $30 check bag fee, and fee that I probably would have paid for main cabin extra, it's not that much more for a bit more comfort. Once out of security, it's not much of a walk as American uses gates in the A concourse, which is attached to the departure hall. When I fly domestic first in the US, I honestly never know what to expect in terms of lounge access, so I always just give it a try. Today, I was incredibly politely turned away. No problem, just need to find coffee. A quick word about Project Oasis, just in case you had no idea what I was talking about. This was a retrofitting program that American launched as a cost-cutting maneuver in 2018, when they did three things to their entire narrow-body fleet of over 400 planes. They installed slimline seats, they reduced leg room to almost comical levels, and they removed all in-flight entertainment screens. It has never been well-received, and for good reason, and was one of the reasons why I was kind of happy to upgrade today. Technically speaking, the 737 Maxes weren't part of the project because they weren't retrofitted. They just came with the new interiors installed from the get-go. The first class seats might look familiar to you as they're essentially the exact same seat as American's long-haul premium economy. But I'm actually not complaining. As far as narrow-body recliner seats go, I think these are actually some of the more comfortable ones and kind of spacious, with not exactly generous legroom, but enough. Let's check out the best seats up for grabs. These Max 8s feature 126 main cabin seats, 30 main cabin extra, and 16 first class seats in a 2-2 configuration. Super standard stuff. There aren't really any seats that really stand out as being better than the rest, but for me as a general rule on 737s, I avoid the first row as the cabin begins to narrow, and there will always be a little bit less leg room in the window seats. Not a huge difference, but something. For today, I was in three Foxtrot. I'll explain what you're supposed to do without a monitor in a moment, but first just want to show a sturdy and large seat pocket which I really appreciate. Often they're floppy or just too tight. Also appreciate the overhead individual air nozzles. Pre-departure drinks were offered and passengers were able to choose the drink of their choice. I went for a vintage water served in an extra cheap feeling plastic cup. Pushback was just a few minutes late, which was a relief for me. This was just a repositioning flight for me. After a few hours layover in Miami, I'd be flying on a separate ticket to Sao Paulo. So this flight being on time for me was greatly appreciated. Today's flight would be taking off from Atlanta's runway 9 left, before a cloudy climb up to 37,000 feet for this 90 minute jump down to Miami's runway 9. A pretty quick and uneventful taxi and we were ready to line up. 
Today we'd be heading east and straight into the clouds before turning south and then breaking out of the clouds at around 8,000 feet. The spool up is up next. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, please give it a like and consider subscribing for two new videos each week. Always feel free to ask any questions in the comment, I make sure to reply to all of them. Also, if you enjoy full length takeoff, cruising or landing videos, please check out my new Roam Above channel where you'll be able to watch today's flights full length takeoff and landings. Links are in the description below and a very big thank you in advance for checking it out. All right, on to the entertainment options. American does offer in-flight streaming, but you'll need to have your own device, which the tray table and the seat back is well designed to hold for you. No matter the phone or the tablet size, you'll be good. The meal service, I mean snack service, started soon after our bumpy climb smoothed out a bit. The standard American snack basket were on offer, and I'm always a fan of anything with a fig in it. What I wasn't too happy about, and probably the worst part of Project Oasis, in my opinion, is what they've done with the bathrooms. 737 forward bathrooms have always been tight due to the curvature of the fuselage, but this is getting a bit ridiculous. Such a short flight, and we're already descending over St. Pete and Anna Maria Island. Flying into Miami on a partly cloudy day is one of my absolute favorite things to do, and we'd be doing the standard approach from the west today, with plenty of fluffy cloud action to keep us entertained. Exiting the runway and we had a bit of a well-timed product placement for me, as you can see Aerolíneas Argentinas, which I'll be reviewing from Buenos Aires to Rio de Janeiro, and also LATAM, which I'll be taking from Sao Paulo all the way across to London. Stay tuned for those trip reports in the next month or two. Plenty of other flights and hotel reviews coming from Sao Paulo, Buenos Aires, and Rio in the meantime. Firmly back in American land, we find our gate after a really lengthy taxi and I begin my walk straight across to the other side of the airport to check in with Avianca. That's all there is to write today, let's go to the flip-flop score. Overall, it was pleasant. Pretty sure all of the scores here are going to be just as you'd expect, but I'll give a special shout out to American's website, which I do believe is generally the best out of the three US carriers to use. I know that's a strange shout out, but it's something that I genuinely do appreciate. Overall, a decent 83 out of 100. I have no problem flying American again, but I'll always try to avoid their narrow body economy cabins. I hope you enjoyed this video and will subscribe and click the notification bell to see my next report on an Avianca 787-8 in business class.